Sam and Yagbush, a third year student at MIT Manipal. And in this video, I'll be telling you about all the exams that I gave when I was in 12th grade. I'm making this video so that you can be more aware of all the engineering exams that are being conducted across the country so that you have some backups in your hand before you take your final decision. Even if you aren't interested in studying in some of the universities mentioned in this list, you should, at least in my opinion, try to apply for them, take their test and take your final call when you have all the results with you because it's always better to have options than to not have any option at all. And since all the exams have the exact same syllabus, you would also be benefiting from all the extra practice. And who knows, maybe all the extra practice actually makes you do well on the dream college test. I would also be explaining the reason about why I chose some of these universities. So if any of them sound reasonable to you, feel free to take those. Starting with number zero, MET the Manipal Entrance Test. My college's entrance test. This is the exam that Manipal Institute of Technology conducts for admission to all of its undergraduate engineering programs. There are four campuses, four different institutes under MIT, Manipal being the oldest branch and the most famous, SMIT, which is the Sikkim Manipal Institute of Technology, not really that well known, then comes NUJ, Manipal University of Jaipur, and then finally, the newest, MIT Bangalore. I took this test because our coaching institute mentors advised us to. After the first attempt, they had advised different people in different percentile range of categories to apply for different entrance exams. For my group, they had asked us to appear for private university tests. Ours are listed three colleges, MIT, VIT, and SRF. So I looked online. For MIT, the reviews were mostly positive. For VIT, they were mixed. And for SRF, I couldn't find a single positive review. So I just picked MIT and VIT. MIT was held twice. The first one was offline before the second wave. Actually, it was conducted right before the second wave. I am so grateful that I took it in the offline mode. About 14,000 people had attempted it in the first go and I got a 96 percentile. The second one was online, I think in either June or July. My score was abysmal. It was like a 35 percentile or something. You understand why. Earlier, I did not want to go to Manipal at all because of its tarnished reputation. But when I couldn't get into BITS, which by the way was my dream college, my parents really forced me to take a backup and hence I chose Manipal because I had always thought of it as the next best option, the next best private university after BITS. And well, I'm really happy. I'm glad it just worked out. Manipal is known for its computer computer science and mechanical branches. So if you're someone who is really into mechanical engineering but couldn't get into any of the IITs, then Manipal is definitely a great option that you should consider. I won't be talking about whether or not you should be enrolling in this college because I've already covered it in a review of mine in the college, like somewhere over here, right here. Go check it out. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments and I'll answer every single one of them. Next up the three most dreaded letters, J-E. This makes you eligible for almost all the government colleges in India, which include NITs, GFTIs, triple IITs, state government colleges, etc. This is further split into two more exams, JE mains and JE advanced. JE mains, this is the biggest examination for all the engineering aspirants. About 10 lakh people apply for it. This is also the gateway to the next exam, which is JE advanced. You cannot qualify for it without appearing for the JE mains. The cutoff varies every year. It is generally somewhere between 85 to 90 percentile. In my year, JE mains was held four times because of COVID. I still unfortunately did not qualify for JE advanced. I already knew that IITs were beyond my reach. So even if I had appeared for JE advanced, I would not have qualified or gotten a good enough rank to get something in an IIT. It's fine. I've made my peace with it. I don't think I would have adjusted that well in an IIT anyway. Number two, 
VIT Tripoli. This is the exam conducted by the Velour Institute of Technology. It also has four campuses. The main one is in Velour, hence the name Velour Institute of Technology and the others are in Chennai, Bhopal and Amravati. I had appeared for its sole online test. It was not conducted in the offline form, so it was just a one-shot exam for everyone. Even here, my rank was really trash, somewhere around 90,000, again, because of rampant cheating, but I wasn't very upset about it because I did not even want to go to VIT in the first place. It was a worst-case scenario and thankfully things did not come down to that. Number 4. UGWE. This is an exam conducted by Triple IIT Hyderabad for dual degree courses in computer science and electronics. This is arguably the best Triple IIT, may even be as good as some of the IIT computer science branches, so it was a very lucrative option. To get into this institute via JE mains, you would have to have a top 500 rank. So this other route of getting into the university makes it a really awesome option. But the paper pattern is a little different from all the other tests that you might have ever given. You have to specifically prepare for them. There are no questions on physics or chemistry. It's just math and aptitude. And there's also an interview round if you do qualify after the exam. Not a very well-known option, but fantastic regardless. Number five. WBJ. This is the state level entrance exam for West Bengal. This makes you eligible for all the government colleges in West Bengal. I had taken it because the Jadavpur University comes under this and only this examination. I know that it has been in the news recently for all the wrong reasons, but it is still a really good university to be in, financially speaking especially. Academics aside, the political scene and all, I won't be discussing in this video. I'm also originally from Calcutta. All my family lives over there, so it would have been a great opportunity to spend some more time in my native city had I gotten into that. But unfortunately, I did not get in. I don't know why that was the reason, because I assumed that all the state entrance exams would be at the same level, and I did really well in the MHD CET. We attributed it to the fact that I did not have a domicile of that state, that's why it affected my rank, because otherwise, there's no explanation about why it was that low. Number six. MHT CET. This is the state level entrance exam for Maharashtra. It makes you eligible for almost all the government colleges in the state. Again, a lot of people outside the state can also apply for it. I had taken this because I have grown up in Maharashtra and studying in a top rated college with my preferred branch in the state would have been really great. I got into VJTI but with electronics and that was not really comparable with MIT Manipal CS, hence I dropped it. Also, otherwise, if I had gotten into the university, I would have had to travel every day 20 kilometers back and forth, so 40 kilometers in total. I was so not prepared for that. In 11th grade, I already had to travel so much to get to my school. I was just not prepared for traveling again for four years. I also really wanted to live that hostel life. I really wanted to live on campus. That's why I was inching more towards OEP, College of Engineering Pune, which is a top rated university but I got civil over there and that's why I didn't pick that either. Number 7. BITSA. This exam is conducted by the Birla Institute of Technology. It is without a doubt India's best private university for engineering. It has three campuses in India and one in Dubai. The one at Pilani is the oldest followed by the one at Goa and then the newest one at Hyderabad. BITSA is very competitive. The questions are certainly easier than what you would get in JE means but the number of questions that you have to solve in the given time constraint is a lot about 150 and there is also a provision for solving extra questions if you manage to answer all 150 of them in time i really wanted bits i would have taken any campus any branch i was so in love with this college because of its entrepreneurial culture and all the youtubers that had emanated from there i had watched a lot of ishan sharma and curious Harish's videos and that made me really want to go over there and follow in their footsteps but that unfortunately did not happen. I scored too low to get anything. The only
only thing that I was getting was bee farm, and in my craziness, I was ready to take that as well because I had read online that one person in the last six years was able to transfer from the bee farm program to the B Tech program, and like apparently it was theoretically possible, but not really because like the transfer credit the courses don't really add up thankfully my parents for tooth and nail hurt trying to knock some sense into me i was really upset i was crying snot and tears i was heartbroken it felt like my life had been ended because i had already sort of imagined my life at bits and what all things that i would do but eventually or rather the evening after the exam i understood that i should probably drop the bits dream number 8 KIIT it is conducted by the Kalinga Institute of Technology in Bhuvaneshwar in Odisha i do have a lot of friends and family studying in this college because it is full of people from west bengal and all the neighboring states even they have conducted four exams all of them online i think there was also a fifth exam i had gotten core csc but it was again a backup option number 9 board these are the board exams that you have to take at the end of your 12th grade to graduate from high school i was enrolled in the isc curriculum would i recommend that to a person who wants to get into an iit not really it was the best option for me because i enjoyed the school environment a lot and i was also in love with english which is best taught in the iscsc and the isc curriculums i absolutely cherished the school environment and did not want to give it up for a dim stuffy classroom with a thousand people crammed into it studying for 16 hours that's why in 11th grade i only went to school jamna bai nasi school at the end of 11th grade i joined champions academy for the je prep i couldn't find any other institute because of the timing mismatch so a spoiler or a damper i did not have to actually give boards they got cancelled because of covid if you're preparing for je then boards are going to be a piece of cake for you just go through all the textbooks a couple of months before you actually take them focus a little bit on english this is just applicable to people who don't care about boards though if you do study both of them side by side since you've stayed here for so long Here are some additional exams that you can take if you are in your 12th grade and are planning to have your undergraduate degree in India in an engineering college. This does not apply for NEET or any other exams because I had dropped bio and taken computer science in 11th grade. One. KCET this is a state entrance examination for Karnataka it is really close to Maharashtra as well so it was a viable option for me i did not end up taking it there are some pretty good universities that you can get via KCET as well if it's feasible go for it your state's entrance exam if it wasn't mentioned in the list above top state colleges are really good and can put you in line with a lot of people from top institutes as well they're good for people who do not want to leave their home for their bachelors as well and they also tend to be financially cheaper too number 3 a lot of other private colleges thapar lnmit srm amity lpu you don't necessarily have to commit to them if you don't want to but it's always good to know that you could choose to go over there if you want to and if by any good fortune you score an amazing rank in their exam you get a scholarship as well at the end of the day your quality of life is going to remain pretty much the same regardless of what university you end up going to as long as it has some kind of reputation and lots of facility the way i went about all these exams was just thinking that i need to succeed in one exam and by succeed i mean like a top 2000 to 3000 rank that is going to open up a lot of avenues for you if there's a private college that you actually wouldn't mind attending but don't necessarily want to sell out the cash find out about all the scholarships that they offer both merit and income based if you have a good enough rank you do get a lot of fee waivers based on your merit that is going to take away a lot of the financial burden which typically is associated with private colleges or otherwise if you do really well in a state level entrance examination you could pick a top rated university in your state i really hope that you get into the university that you've dreamed about if you do congratulations if you don't 
remember the college is a very small part of your identity and it will become even smaller if you let it